Boy, Max, you must feel like a king owning Bella Vista. Oh, I sure do. I just wish I hadn't inherited it. The only way you can do that is if a person dies. I know. I'm sure you're still hurting because of Don Alonzo's murder. But at least look at it this way, okay? Dante Medina or whoever murdered him didn't win. Yeah. I mean, Don Alonzo left you in his will, and he did that out of love for you. But I never got to say thank you. I hope the old man knew how much I really loved him. It's like a grandfather to me. Max. Senor Holden's you now. I own Bella Vista. I'm your boss. There's a car loaded with baggage outside. Go bring it in and take it upstairs. Already you move in? I got a lawyer who won approval for me and my wife to move in before the will was probated. Oh. Abel, this is Senora Holden. Oh, buenos dias. Did you hear me? Go get the luggage. Well, what was that all about? And uh, you certainly fit into the role of king quite nicely. <laughs> That man is not to be trusted. He doesn't like me. Feeling is mutual. When he's around, you be careful. Clint. Cord, I just called down the stairs looking for you. Well, look, I just got here myself. Well, uh, I got a plum assignment for you. Hope you got your camera back. Wait a minute. I'm gonna need to take a leave of absence effective immediately. I found out who the fellow was that Tina took off with. They're down in Buenos Aires. I'm gonna go find her and I'm gonna bring her back home. Are you crazy? Well, look, Cord, you might still be a little bit in love with her, but you got to know you can't take her back. It's not just Tina anymore, Clint. We are talking about my baby. She is definitely pregnant. I know that for a fact. is over. Nice chatting with you. You don't even know why I want to talk to you. Nor do I care. But I need your help and I need it badly. Please, won't you at least just listen to me? What's in it for me? Uh, yes, please, Black. Okay. Uh, as I said on the phone, I wanted to have this little family conference in regard to Jamie. The authorities have a pretty good idea of where he is now. Wh which is? Which is Buenos Aires. So he didn't stay in Brazil? No. No, he, uh, he used Keith Radcliffe's passport and crossed over into Argentina. When? A couple of days ago. At least that's the latest information I got from Herb yesterday. Yesterday? This is the first time I'm hearing about it? Well, Judith, apparently Herb wanted to wait for a little more news before he called you. I don't know, but the, the bottom line is, uh, thank you very much. But the, the international, the international police are still, you know, continuing to hunt for him. So, do we do anything or do we just sit here and wait? No, well, I've, I've already called a good friend of mine, Luis Alvarez, who lives down there. He's in the, the federal government and I apprised him of the situation and told him I'd be down personally the middle of next week. Next week he could be gone by then. Well, Judith, I, I have to testify before the Senate Hearing Committee on some Andorran trade agreements. I can't possibly go before that. Well, I know, but he could hear something by then. He could bolt. I mean, somebody's got to go now. Oh, wait a minute. What could either of you do? He's made it perfectly clear that he doesn't care what you think or feel. Well, Katie, I'm not expecting any anything wonderful, but I feel a responsibility not only as his father, but as a... As a citizen, to go down, try to contact him and talk him into giving himself up. Oh, please, what, you think he's going to give up his freedom and willingly come back to spend the rest of his life in an American prison? Well, an American prison sounds a lot better than one in South America, doesn't it? Yeah, I'll agree with you on that. 
I'm going to go to Buenos Aires. I'm going to take care of it. How do you know for a fact that she's pregnant? Dorian told me. See, uh, apparently Tina stopped over there a couple of weeks ago. She wasn't feeling very well. Well, Dorian came to the conclusion that Tina was pregnant. So she sent Tina over to Dr. Connors, Dorian's private doctor, to make sure that there was no funny business, right? Well, I saw Dr. Connors myself. I got the results. She is pregnant. It is my baby, and I'm going to find her. Cord, who's this fella that she left town with? The guy's name is Max Holden. Look, it's a long story. I knew the guy back in El Paso when we were kids. His mom and my mom were best friends. Max showed up in Lambview. He met Tina. He wanted to bring her down to Buenos Aires because he had this great little cattle ranch he wanted to buy. Well, apparently Tina went. Court, I'm still having a little trouble with this. You know why? Why? Because Tina has got to know that once, once she started showing, once you found out that she was pregnant, you were going to take her back. I mean, look at you. You're going to go charging off to find her for the sake of the baby. Clint, emotionally, I gave her a real good beat. Now, maybe she just had enough. Maybe she wanted to take off for a while until all those things became apparent. I, I don't know. What are you hoping for? I don't know that either. So can you spare me? Can you give me the time off? Of course you can have the time off. <laughs> what the hell? This is my grandchild we're talking about, isn't it? Yeah, it is. My child and your grandchild. It's starting to feel like deja vu here, isn't it? Yeah, well, we don't want to repeat that history, do we? I mean, you have every right in the world to see the baby born and help raise him. And not meet him when he's 20-some years old, huh? Look, uh, I'll keep you posted. You do that. Now listen, Court, if you need any help, you let me know. I will. Clint, thanks for, uh, for being a terrific father. Probably. It was the prize of Don Alonzo's collection. Oh. Does that mean you're into old guns, too? Meaning I'm going to hang on to it instead of selling it for the cash? <laughs> Honey, we're not hard up, remember? I was willed this ranch. I still have all the money from the silver mine. All right, you know, I wasn't asking for a complete report on your bank account, you know. I was just, just curious about the old gun, that's all. Besides, you don't have to insinuate that I'm some kind of a gold digger. You? That was a knee-jerk reaction like you were talking to Cord Roberts instead of Max Holden. You forget I love money just as much as you do, huh? Hey, I may sell the collection eventually for the cash, but right now it's sentimental. Don Alonzo loved it. I know, and I'm ashamed of myself for only thinking about its materialistic value, okay? And I just have to stop thinking that way. That's all there is to it. Then you're home, then. Margarita! Oh, God. I keep missing you. I was in town. Um, oh, how you say, into ground man. Oh, the undertaker? Mm. Oh, I'm so sorry. You loved him so much, you were devoted to him. Don Alonso. Like family. Yes, well, I hope you're going to stay here and be part of my family here. Along with my wife. Margarita, meet Tina Holden. Tina, this is the woman that keeps this whole house running and tended to Don Alonzo when he's in bad health. It's a pleasure meeting you, Margarita. <laughs> I hear from ranch hands how beautiful you are, Senora Holden. And nice lady, too. Oh, she sure is. Right. Upstairs. Where else? Master suite, por favor. Margarita, so you do not like him either. Mm, no. Bad hombre. He works for Dante Medina, I think. I do not know for sure, but he changed. He have more dinero. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if he were on Dante Medina's payroll. 
paid him to let him know I was coming back. Hmm, es posible, señor Holden. Tina, Tina, are you sick again? Oh, uh, just a little, you know, it must still be that water, you know. I have no idea how long it's going to take me to get used to this, do you? No, I don't know, it didn't bother me at all. Hey, listen, why, why don't you let Marguerite take you upstairs, huh, to the master suite? With the connecting rooms. Come on, maybe you need to lie down a little while, huh? Yeah, maybe. This way, senora. Bella Vista. Hello? Max? M Max, is that you? Yes. Maria? I'm afraid so. Maria, what the hell are you doing calling me here? What if Tina picked up the phone? Well, I, I would have hung up. Max, listen to me carefully. You and Tina have to get out of Buenos Aires today. I hate your mother. I have no sympathy for her dilemma, whatever it is. And I suppose you hate my father, too. Because as district attorney, he helped put you in here. <laughs> That's right. Your father is the district attorney. I'd forgotten that connection for the moment. So, um, if I find it in my heart to help you with your little problem, maybe he'll help me with mine. Get my sentence reduced. You know he can't do that unless he finds new oh. evidence to prove you're not guilty of all the charges. He can get me transferred out of Statesville. Look, time spent anywhere else but here would be a gift. You can't expect me to be popular with women that I, I used to protect. I could inquire. You've got to do more than that. You've got to get behind it. How can I do that if I don't even know you're going to help me? Well, let's hear what you want from me. Everything you know about Diane Bristol, everything. <laughs> that little innocent your mother had sprung from here. What's she done now? Is she innocent? My mother completely trusts her, and I think she's dangerous. And to be completely honest with you, I'm worried about my mother's life. <laughs> That's supposed to make me feel bad or something. You know, I had you all wrong, Fitz. I thought you were a much better person than your old boss, Jamie Sanders. But I guess you have the same rotten value system that rat does. Does this have anything to do with Sanders? That's what I want you to tell me. Is there any connection between Jamie and Diane? Oh. There's a connection there, all right. Si, sí, si, sí, ya entiendo. Gracias, Abel. Abel? Isn't he the same one who works up at Bela Vista? Yes. With some very disturbing news. Max Holden and his wife moved into the Bella Vista this morning, and he's already made it clear he doesn't trust Abel, and he will probably let him go. And what about Enrico? No, he's not suspicious of him yet. Damn! I thought we'd have more time before they moved into the ranch. Well, then, we'd better make sure that we harvest our coca crop before it's discovered. No problem. My men are scheduled to harvest at dusk. Then they will store the leaves at a bar nearby. I believe I mentioned it to you earlier. It's part of the abandoned part of the ranch that Don Alonso hasn't used for years. But I cannot see any reason why Holden would even drive out Unless there. he's so wild about his new ranch that he wants to check it all himself. Yes. But then if he and his wife have just settled into the house, maybe not. Yes. Well, that may be too late then for Mr. Holden. I hope he doesn't get the urge to drive over his land. And I thought things were so smooth down here for you. <laughs> Not like it was with me back in the States, at the other end of the coke business. Oh, no. It will be smooth once again, Jamie. One way or another. But just remember, the profits far outweigh whatever small problems we may encounter. Yeah. Boy, you sure switched from leather manufacturer to cocaine king with no problem. <laughs> None at all. Ah, Gabby, here. Over here, Gabby. There you are. Do you remember our young American friend here? This is my lovely daughter, Gabby Gabriela. Of course, buenos dias, Gabriel. 
He's going to be staying with us for a while. I'm going to teach him the leather business. I'm driving into the city. Is there anything I can get for you? No, no, nothing. Just, no, no, no. Jamie, I want you to hear her perfect English. She was a prize student at the School of Ballet in England, where they also taught her their language, but she has been taught too well. She insists on using it all the time. <laughs> what are you going to do in town? Visit Abuela for one thing and go shopping for another. I'll only be a few hours. Your hands are cold. You seem a little nervous, are you? No. No, I'm just in a hurry, that's all. All right, Joe. Ciao. Ciao. Why did you frown when she said she was going to visit her grandmother? Well, Doña Carmen is an insufferable old woman. She's always been against me. Gabriela's too close to her. She certainly is a gorgeous young treat, isn't she? Wipe that lust off your face. If you go near her, I swear I'll kill you. Hey, take it easy. I'm just giving her a calm. I don't care. My daughter knows nothing about me. She doesn't know the harsh world that you and I live in, Jamie. I just want her to be an unspoiled flower until the right Argentinian can be found. Understood? Fine. I've always considered unspoiled flowers a bit of a drag anyway. Max, Cordero is leaving today for Buenos Aires. He wants to try to find Tina and bring her back. What? Why the sudden desire to get her back? Well, I, I guess it, it must have hurt him very much when he found out that she left. Obviously, you had no problem buying a ranch. Yeah, uh, Don Alonso sold it to me, just like he promised. And that's why I can't leave and take off. Oh, but you, you have to. Well, why? Cord doesn't know where we are. Well, your brother saw, saw Tina, and Stephen told Cord that she was financing the ranch down there. Yeah, but even still, it's little chance he's going to find us, so we're not going anywhere, huh? We made a deal. I stuck to my end of it. This changes everything, man. Not for me and not for Tina. Now, look, he'll come down here, he'll look around, he'll get tired of looking for her, he'll go back home. I'm not about to play around the world in 80 days to try to shake him. You're underestimating him, Max. He is not going to give up so easily. He treated her like a dog. So now his ego's a little bent out of shape. He'll get over it. Now, don't call me back again. Goodbye, Maria. Max! Tina, you okay? Yeah, I passed. I didn't have to lie down after all. So who was on the phone? The president inviting us to uh, Casa Rosada this evening? Uh, almost, but not quite. It was the feed store owner raising the price for the gringo. Oh! Abel! I want to talk to you. Uh, friend of oh, then. I I show you more of house. Oh, thank you, Margarita, but no, I think I'd rather stay here with my husband. How long have you been working for Dante Medina? Hmm? And what exactly are your duties here? Margarita spreads lies. Margarita spreads nothing but good feelings. But you, on the other hand, you told him that I was the one coming back. You probably helped murder Don Alonso and take his body into town. You do not talk that way to me. All right. Excuse me for being so rude. Let me put it this way. Get the hell off my ranch, you're fired! And as for your new boss, you can tell him I'm gonna keep poking around until I find out that he's been behind the murder. You have much to learn, Senor. Yeah, well, I've got much to learn, huh? And you get the hell off my property now! Well, you uh, can get angry, can't you? <laughs> Remind me never to give you anything to be mad at me about. What? Be mad at you? No way, Tina. Of course, you might drive me to an insane asylum, but I'll probably be smiling all the way. <laughs> uh, so, do we have to worry about Abel doing something to hurt you? Trust me, he's the least of our worries right now. All right. I, uh, I guess I'll take Margarita up on her offer and, uh, see the rest of our wonderful new house.
track Jamie down by myself, that's a job for the police. And also, Cord Roberts is going down there because that's where his wife has run off to, so I'll have his support. Katie, are you sure that's not the real reason you want to go down there because of Cord? Not a masochist, Dad. To tell you the truth, I think both missions will be a failure, but I'm gonna try. All right. I'm, I'm sorry, but I do have to leave. Judith, will you try to talk her out of this, please? Most of the time, Katie sounds more sensible than both of us, but this time it really bothers me. Why? Because you think you can make more headway with Jamie? No, because I think you're in for a heartbreak with Cord Roberts. Well, I couldn't agree with your mother more on that one. But that probably isn't going to stop you. Do have a heart-to-heart -heart with your mom and let me know, okay? I'll talk to you both later. All right. Bye. I think I'd better get going. I... Katie, we have to talk about your brother and about Cord Roberts. speaking English again today? I'm making you remember it from days long ago when you went to school in England. <laughs> oh, I can barely remember being that young, let alone the language. Your mind is as sharp as ever. I only hope your heart is as open as ever. What does that mean, Gabrielle? I, I can't keep this inside any longer. Abuela, that's why I haven't been to see you. But I can't live with it alone anymore either. Oh, you're making me afraid. I'm with child. I'm pregnant. <sighs> and I will start showing soon, the doctor tells me. Oh, please don't think I'm awful. Oh, I... I didn't know there was a man you were close to. There isn't. I mean, there isn't now. But a few months ago, I was very unhappy. You know, Papa treats me like a little girl. He doesn't want me to see anyone. He wants to find the perfect man for me. I felt as though I was suffocating. And then I met this stranger. By accident. I knew the moment he smiled at me that he was in Buenos Aires to bring romance into my life. And I fell in love with him. Oh, Gabriel. Papa never knew. We met secretively. I told him I was here at a friend's. And where is he now? You do not even know? He returned to America. He said he'd be back. But so far, he hasn't. I've given up hope while the baby grows. I keep pretending I'm gaining weight. But for how long? Papa will see. Papa will know. I know he will. I don't know what he'll do. Oh, he will be disgraced. He will send you away, force you to give up this baby. I believe that, too. But I must have the chance to tell the baby's father. He'll marry me. I know he will. And then I won't be a disgrace to our family. I can even move back to America and pretend it all happened there. Then does he love you? He must. <laughs> even if he once did, many men forget about love when they face responsibility. Not Max. Abuela, you must help me convince Papa to let me go to America. You must help me find the strength to tell Max I'm pregnant with his child. Oh. <laughs> Clint? Oh, Clint. You've got to stop Cordero from going to Buenos Aires. plane is leaving from Philadelphia I at know 2 o'clock. I know that. I know that. He was here. I gave him the time off. Oh, no, Clint. This will be the end of his life. Tina will have a hold on him forever. I mean, she'll... She'll make his life miserable until he dies. You hear what you're saying? You hear yourself? Now, Maria, think of what you're saying. That sounds like the same words uh, Asa would have used when he forced your mother to take you out of my life. 
I... I guess I'm really not thinking at all, am I? I'm just reacting. Coletta was so loyal. He will sacrifice his own happiness to stay with Tina and... and be a father to their child. It just breaks my heart, Clint. I can't help it. Uh, look, Maria. It is possible that Bettina can change. And no one has ever doubted the fact that she has left loved here. Court. She left here with some strange man. Out of desperation, maybe. Or maybe just to kill some time until Court finds out for sure that she's pregnant. But at any rate, Court is a grown man. And he's going to do what's right for the child. I know. I know. I, I guess the only thing left for me to do is to go to Buenos Aires. And do what? Be there if he needs me. I, in case he needs me. In case Tina decides to spit in his face. And if she tells him that she found some rich man to take care of her and the baby. I don't know. I just... I just feel that our son is going to be in a lot of pain, Clint. Well, you could be right. Look, I have to get this copy down to the city room. You get on the phone and uh, see if there's a flight out tonight. If there is, make a couple reservations for both of us. This is ridiculous. I agree. Look, you offer me nothing but maybes. But I'm supposed to tell you everything I know about Diane Bristol and Jamie Sanders? All right. All right, I will talk to my father, and I will see what he can do about getting you transferred to another facility. <laughs> Good. Make it one of those country club-type places. I will be back when I get more information. Don't! Unless you've got something to trade. Listen, you just think about it. Every little detail you know about Diane Bristol. First of all, why is Cord going after Tina? I thought their separation was irrevocable. That's what you told me. Well, he's since found out that she's pregnant. Now I guess he'll do whatever he has to do, which means no chance of us getting together. This is all presuming that he can find Tina. But if he finds her, you don't want to be there. It's going to be hurtful for you. Mom, you're presuming I'm in love with him, and I'm not. Kate... You have always been one of the most honest people I know, and especially about yourself, and you don't lie. Come on. Okay. It's true. But I'm not the sort of woman who falls in love with a married man, right? I'm much too smart and sensitive for that sort of thing, so I'll just... I'll get over it. But you did believe that it was over between Tina and Cord. I wish I could use that as an excuse, but it was happening before they split. I had control over it. At least, I thought I did. I don't know. I certainly don't want to get him on the rebound. I don't know, Mom. It's nothing like this has ever happened to me before. I love him. And I don't know what I'll do if they get back together. Don't you think I understand what you're going through? Your father and I went through the same experience. We knew it was just crazy to fall in love, but we couldn't help ourselves. It was just sort of this mysterious thing takes over. Well, I'm going to fight it. You have to. I know you've tried. I don't think you should go to Buenos Aires with Cord. I'm very worried about you. If they have a reconciliation... I'll just only... come home in the baggage compartment. I don't know. I want to be there in case he needs me. Jamie might need me, too. If Max Hogan can't be bought out, then we'll throw him out and make sure he never comes back. It infuriates me when I think how smug he was when he found the will in the hidden safe. 
But Max Holden will see. I don't care that he's moved into Bella Vista. That ranch belongs to me, not to Holden. Sorry I took so long. Oh, that's, that's all right. It, it gave me time to do a little thinking. Did you make the reservations? Yes, I did. But just for one, Clint. You know, you... You just got custody of your three children, and... Yes, I was thinking the same thing downstairs. I really can't leave now. Besides, Cord is not in any real danger, right? Right, and I can certainly stand by him if he is devastated by Tina, or... Or if he simply just can't find her. Well, I just hope to hell they get... They get reunited, and that she gets her act together, and they can be a happy family. Yes. Well, I'd, I'd better get home and start packing. Yeah, well, listen. Don't keep me in the dark. Please stay in touch. I will. And, and you take care of yourself. You too. Hi, I've been calling. Come on in. I've been wondering where you were. I had a feeling you might be. What's the bag for? Where are you headed? Well, I'm headed south. Way south. South as far as Argentina. I've even reserved a seat on the plane right beside you, but we're going to have to talk about this because I hate aisle seats. Well, Kate, I appreciate what you're trying to do. You know I'm going to need help when I find Tina, right? I, I accept that. I'll probably need help finding her in the first place, but I don't think it's a good Rain idea for you. Rain ego, honey. I'm not going because of you. Then why are you going? I'm going because the international police have traced my brother, Jamie. It seems that he used Keith Radcliffe's passport to get into Argentina, and he's somewhere in Buenos Aires. Oh, you're kidding me. No, it seems the escapees from our lives are in the same city. But why are you going down there? Why can't your father... Why should anyone in your family have to deal with Jamie? In case you haven't noticed, he's becoming quite a dangerous criminal. I know that. My mother and father can't take any more. I'm tough, remember? Not as tough as you pretend to be. Oh, wait a minute. You want to see how tough I am? No, Kate. I... I don't want to fight with you. But I am being serious. Now, if you go down there looking for Jamie, I, I'm not just worried about the physical harm. You're also going to take a couple of emotional kicks in the gut, too. Maybe you should think about your own gut. What if you find Tina and she says that she wants to stay right where she is? Well, Kate, Tina left in the first place because I wouldn't believe that she was pregnant when she told me. Well, maybe that was enough to kill her love for you. Maybe she found somebody else, and maybe she doesn't care about you anymore. Kate, you are talking about my child. Now, come on. Why are you trying so hard to convince me that I don't have a chance or that I shouldn't even try? Okay. First thing you do when you saddle Brock is pick up the saddle and throw it on his or her back. This weighs almost as much as I do. under her belly. Grab a cinch. Why she doesn't want me to reach under her belly and cinch it. Senor Holden's wife, Tina.
Gabrielle! Who? Whoa, 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 whoa. What are you two doing, huh? Not gonna say hello? Hello? No, I don't think so. Hey, hey, you just got here. Obviously a big mistake. Well, did you hear from your old man that I inherited Don Alonzo's ranch? Yes, my father told me, but you didn't. And then I hear from a ranch hand that you've got a wife. Now do you see why I made a big mistake? And look, I was gonna call you the first thing I settled in. Huh? What are you so mad about? A lot of things have changed since we were together. I've been betrayed. How, how did I use you, huh? Come on, huh? We've always been honest with, with each other, haven't we? It doesn't matter. Just as I never mattered. Listen, we can be friends. Hey, you and Tina are gonna love each other. <laughs> I prayed you'd come back. Now I wish God never saw fit to answer my prayers. I just don't have much faith in the people that we're going after. Good. I just... I just don't want to see Tina hurt you again. Tina and I are still legally married. Now, that means that I've got rights as a prospective father, all right? I told you, I, I will get a lawyer if I have to. I will do whatever I need to do to make sure that I am part of that baby's life. I know. I really do understand. I hope you do, Kate. Now, in the meantime, you've got Jamie to worry about. Yeah, he's, uh, he's become the perpetual bad penny. He just keeps on showing up. You know, he's not going to be that easy to find, Kate. Buenos Aires is a big city, and I'm sure he's changed his name again. I know. I realize that. I think that maybe my dad can help us, though. He knows a government official down there. Maybe he can even help us find Tina. Great. Look, I've just got a few more things to pack, and then we can take off. Here we are, going off on another Mission Impossible, huh? Too bad we weren't getting paid for these by the government or something. The Clint understood why you had to leave? Yeah, well, he's been through uh, something like this himself, so he understood. I just hope I can keep it from happening to the next generation of Buchanan's. Well, I'm finished. Let's, let's go. Kate, uh, I am glad that you're coming with me. Radar for ears. No, I didn't hear anything, just the body language. It was clear she was very angry at you. Who is she? Her name is Gabrielle Medina. Related to Dante? His daughter. His very inexperienced daughter. At least until I came around last fall. I see. So you two were lovers? Uh, yeah. And she fell in love with you? I'm not sure. That's why I'm so confused. She freaked out because I didn't call her when I came into town and because she thought I was married. Tina, she, she's claiming I used her. I would never do that. She told me she loved me, but you know, I always made it clear that I liked her a lot, but I really wasn't sure about that love part. But did you promise her anything? No. 
I said that when I left, I intended to come back. That's all. Well, maybe she took that as a promise, you know, and she was lonely, and she started fantasizing about you riding into town. It's not the reaction I expected. Does your father know about the two of you? <laughs> I'm still alive, aren't I? Yeah. Well, I feel sorry for her. I know just how she feels. Wanting someone that you know you can't have. You don't have to look at me like that. You, you know what's on my mind, Tina? Your body might be here in Buenos Aires, but your head is still off in Landview. You're going to have to give him up. You can't start a new life if you're still hanging on to the old one. Well, you know, it may take a little time, and maybe you're just going to have to be a little patient. Yeah. Well, I'm afraid that I'm starting to run out in that department. Maybe it's because I'm starting to feel too much for you. I just don't want to see you suffer like this. Yeah, well, maybe after everything I've done in my life, maybe, maybe I just have to suffer a little. You're watching the Totally Outrageous Tina Lord Marathon. Stay tuned for another episode.